Light travels in a vacuum at velocity c equal 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The velocity can always be written as wavelength times frequency, or lambda f. When light travels into a material having index or refraction n, then its velocity decreases to v equals c over n. Its wavelength decreases to lambda prime equal lambda over n, but its frequency remains the same because this frequency is determined by the source that creates the light. Here are some common values for the index of refraction n in a vacuum or air or water or glass. In this situation, light is initially moving in material number 1 having index of refraction n1. When the light encounters the second material, having index n2, then a portion of the incoming light is transmitted into the second material, and the rest is reflected. When light reflects from a material having a higher index of refraction, then the reflected light has a 180 degree phase shift. This extra 180 degree phase shift occurs when n2 is greater than n1. In a previous chapter we saw that waves on a rope have this extra 180 degree phase shift when reflecting from a material that has a higher mass density. In the case of light waves, we say that the reflected wave has an extra 180 degree phase shift when bouncing off a material that has a higher optical density, which means bouncing off a higher n. As the light moving in material number 2 encounters material number 3, further portions are reflected and transmitted. This reflected ray has an extra 180 degree phase shift if n3 is greater than n2, which occurs if this light is bouncing off a higher n. We consider the interference between these two reflected waves, A and B, when material number 2 has thickness T, and the incoming light is perpendicular to the interface. Light has traversed distance T twice, so the path difference is 2T. To avoid drawings that have many overlapping arrows, we instead draw the rays at an angle even though they really are arriving perpendicular to the interface. We take material number 1 to be air, whose index of refraction n1 equals 1. The wavelength in material 1 will be lambda, and the wavelength in material 2 is lambda 2, which is also lambda over n2. We are interested in interference that is fully destructive or fully constructive. Interference between the two reflected waves, A and B, occurs when the path difference, 2t, is an integer or an odd half integer number of wavelengths lambda 2 in material number 2. Since lambda 2 equals lambda over n2, we instead write the condition as 2n2t equals m lambda for maximum or 2n2t equals m plus a half lambda for a minimum. This occurs when there are no extra phase shifts at either interface. When there is an extra 180 degree phase shift at one of the interfaces, then we swap these two equations for min and max. If there's an extra 180 degree phase shift at both interfaces 1, 2, and 2, 3, then we would swap the equations twice getting back to where we started from. In this example, the three materials are air with index of refraction 1.0, a thin coating with index N2 equals 2.1, and then glass with index N3 equals 1.5. The incoming light first strikes the air coating interface. Since N2 is greater than N1, the light that reflects off this interface has an extra 180 degree phase shift. The light that is transmitted through the coating reflects off the glass coating interface. But this time, N3 is less than N2, 
This reflection does not get the extra 180 degree phase shift. We want to find the least thickness of coating that will cancel reflections of light having a wavelength lambda equal 550 nanometers. Since we have one extra 180 degree phase shift, we swap the usual equations for min and max reflections. We find the minimum thickness from 2 N2T equals M lambda. The least thickness occurs for M equal 1. Higher values of M require more coating material and this means a higher manufacturing cost. Leaving the wavelength in nanometers gives the thickness of the coating as 131 nanometers. In this example, the three materials are first, air with index N1 equal 1.0, and then a thin coating with index N2 equal 1.3, and then glass with index N3 equal 1.5. As incoming light bounces off the air coating interface, an extra 180 degree phase shift occurs since the light is bouncing off a higher end. This also happens at the coating glass interface. There is once again another extra 180 degree phase shift because the light is bouncing off a higher end. We want to find the least thickness of coating that will cancel reflections of light having a 550 nanometer wavelength lambda. Since we have two extra phase shifts, we find minimum from the usual minima equation. That's 2N2T equals M plus a half lambda. The least thickness occurs for M equals zero. Leaving the wavelength in nanometers, we get the least thickness to be 106 nanometers. In this example, the distance T between two sheets of glass grows linearly as T equals Kx. The incoming light first reflects at point A and gets an extra 180 degree phase shift. The light that continues downward reflects at point B and this also gets an extra 180 degree phase shifts. With two such extra phase shifts, the equation for maxima remains 2nt equals m lambda. Substituting t equals kx, we solve for m over x equals 2nk over lambda. m over x is the number of bright fringes per meter. A soap bubble is an air-filled hollow sphere whose surface is a thin film of soapy water. The index of refraction of soapy water is about 1.3. It is hard to tell just by looking, but the thickness varies throughout the surface and is the same order of magnitude as visible light. Bright red colors appear wherever the thickness is an odd half integer multiple of the wavelength of red light. The incoming light is moving through air. We have N1 equals 1.0. This light bounces off a higher index, N2 equal 1.3. When bouncing off this higher index, the reflection has an extra 180 degree phase shift. At the N2 and 3 interface, no extra phase shift occurs. With a total of one extra phase shift, we swap the equations for minima and maxima. Which thickness has constructive interference that makes bright red light? We have 2n sub 2t equals n plus a half lambda for m equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Since water flows downward, the side of the soap bubble has an increasing thickness that produces constructive interference in a repeating sequence for blue, then green, then red light. For m equals zero, this is the least thickness for blue light, and this is the least thickness for red light. For m equal one, this is the thickness for bright blue light, 
and this is the thickness for red light. And this pattern repeats as the thickness of the soap bubble increases. For M equal 2 and wavelength lambda equal 550 nanometer, we get the thickness T equals 530 nanometers. Bright colors on some birds and moths and butterflies is sometimes due to diffraction gratings or thin film interference in molecular structures. These squid are making their own colors.